Good morning. I'm going to demonstrate kind of a probably the neatest uh, telephone project I've run across in quite some time. Uh, what it is is a pulse dialing to DTMF converter circuit. And uh, this is an example of the circuit. I built up a number of these. I'll get it centered here. Uh, and it's based on an AT Tiny 85 uh, at Mega chip, which is a small microcontroller. Uh, this takes care of detecting the pulse dialing on an old rotary dial phone, like you see behind the uh, circuit board here on my desk. And it uh, takes the pulses and converts them into touch tone or DTMF dual tone multi frequency tones. And what this enables you to do is to use an old antique phone like this that has been retrofitted with this circuit on uh, modern uh, VoIP lines using a VoIP analog telephone adapter like the OBI 302 unit. I've got it connected up to this old uh, Western Electric 302 set. This set was used in the 1940s and 1950s and is sometimes known as the Lucy phone since it was prominently featured on the popular television show of the 50s, I Love Lucy, so that's its kind of a nickname. This is um, one of the several I have in my collection, a little bit beat up, but uh, it's polished up and looks pretty good, and it works fine. What I've done is I've taken this circuit and I've retrofitted it inside of the telephone. To do that, it requires a connection directly to the dial through these three wires uh, to detect um, the, uh, the pulses and also when the dial has moved off its normal state. It uh, requires a connection to the incoming telephone line on these two wires and these two wires um, connect into the telephone network or um, induction coil on the inside of the telephone. So it's a little bit complicated to install. They do make versions of these that plug directly into the telephone cord on the back of a phone and avoid having to do any kind of internal modification. But they have some significant disadvantages. This one allows you to dial tones after the phone call is actually connected. Uh, a lot of other um, uh, conversion uh, mechanisms only allow you to dial the initial call using uh, the converter. But after you're connected to the end user, if you want to use touch tones to do uh, banking, for example, or control the prompts on an IVR system, you know, a voice response system, you really can't do that or it doesn't work very reliably. This is very, very reliable. It also has the capability, using a few tricks, of allowing you to dial the star and the pound keys, which uh, you wouldn't think you could do with just a 10-digit rotary dial, but that's quite easy to do, actually. There also is a last number re redial function and um, also some additional memories, 4 through 0, which can store speed dial numbers so you don't have to do all of the rotary dials constantly. You can just uh, store your most often used numbers into the speed dial. And all those are stored in the non-volatile RAM or EEPROM, double EEPROM on this AT Tiny 85 chip. So very nice, uh, very nice little unit. Now in addition, I've uh, programmed in and modified the um, code that I found online to do a few additional tricks. It's also possible now to uh, go into a hotline mode where the phone will automatically dial a number when it's uh, taken off hook, which could be useful in the uh, case where you've got a phone installed at an invalid's house where they need to be able to contact you quickly. All they would need to do would be to remove the receiver off hook and it would, uh, it would automatically dial. I also allow um, adjusting uh, the tone length for compatibility with almost any telephone system or VoIP, uh, VoIP system. And uh, one added feature, which I'll talk about at the very end, that I, I've optionally included here, is a blue box functionality. That allows the phone to go into a mode where it generates an entirely different set of tones, and those are the tones that were used by phone freaks to, um, to access Ma Bell's uh, long-distance network and make free telephone calls back in the... 1950s, 60s, and uh, into the 70s, and even 80s. Uh, that's uh, really only of use for phone freak 
people, and we'll probably cover that into in another uh, in another video or a second video. So I'm going to show and demo I'm gonna, how this uh, unit operates. I'll leave it here. I've got this phone hooked up to a speaker, and to avoid any feedback, when I go off hook, I'm going to pick up the receiver and lay the mouthpiece onto a folded towel I have here to kind of dampen the sound because uh, I want enough volume that it shows up on the video well. So we'll take it off hook and I've got the ATA, ATA set up to generate an old style dial tone uh, rather than a modern dial tone just for some authenticity. So uh, what I'm going to do <coughs> initially is to dial into a music on hold uh, number and that will allow us to play around with the telephone features without having to worry about uh, intercept tones and uh, misdialing and so forth. So let me do that quickly before really explaining anything. It will give you an idea of how it works. You are currently the only person in this conference. So right now we're dialed into a conference bridge that has music on hold playing in the background since we're the only ones on the conference. So we can kind of freely play around with the, uh, with the features here. So in normal mode when you go off hook each one of the digits is simply translated into its uh, touch tone counterpart. So quite simple. Uh, star and pound are played by what's called hold dialing. That involves taking one of these digits, holding it against the finger stop until a tone is heard, and then releasing it, which has the effect of sort of shifting the the uh, the dial into a, another alternate mode. So, for example, to play the star key, we'll press, uh, we'll hold dial and hold one. And we heard the second beep and then released it and that played the star tone rather than the one. Uh, if we press the two, or dial and hold two, that plays the pound key. So the, um, that's very useful in terms of being able to access IVR systems. So um, let's hang up. Now another feature on the uh, chip is that it will remember the last number dialed and then uh, allow redialing when you go off hook. So that is done by dialing and holding digit 3. Now all our intervening or subsequent uh, dials were also stored but the uh, first several digits were captured and were sufficient to reconnect us to our to our conference bridge. So that's the basic functionality. Now in addition to that, it is possible to, uh, using digits 4 through 0 and another special function, to program uh, speed dials into locations 4 through 0. So I'm going to do that on location 0 just to demonstrate. First we'll dial and hold and wait for, two be wait for two beeps. Now the second beep indicates that we're in programming mode. Now, as of right now, I can dial in a, a, a sequence that I would like to dial or store into location zero. So we'll dial the conference bridge access number and a beep confirms the entry. And to save that, you simply hang up the phone. And now that number is stored in location zero. Now to redial it, wait for the beep. You are currently the only person in this. And we're reconnected back into our conference bridge again. That can be done for uh, any of the locations four through zero. Now, uh, I mentioned there was a hotline feature. 
that automatically dialed the, uh, the phone when going off hook. And that is activated or turned on by a special dial and hold uh, sequence used with digit one. I'll basically hold this down, wait for two beeps, and release it, and that will turn on the, uh, the hotline feature. Wait for the second beep. And we heard that one low beep afterwards. That indicates that um, a one second delay from going off hook to dialing is now active, and that is adjustable. So we'll hang up, and now when we go off hook with that feature active. You are currently the only person in this conference. Whatever is stored in location zero is automatically dialed, and actually that was a half second, um, half second delay. There's four delays selectable, um, starting with a half second, uh, one second, uh, no, they're one second increments, sorry, it's one second, two seconds, three seconds and four seconds for systems that require a long time to return dial tone. So we'll try that again. One second delay. You are currently the only person in this conference. Now if we want a two second delay, we simply repeat the activation sequence for the feature. Two beeps. We are two beeps, we're at, two, we're at a two second delay and now you'll hear the uh, delay to dialing is extended by to two seconds. You are currently. You are currently the only person in this conference. Now we can also set three seconds, four seconds. And the next time we do it, it'll turn the feature off and then start over again with the one second delay if reactivated. So that descending series of three beeps indicates that the redial feature is now off. And as you can see, it does not hot dial. However, we can dial. currently the only person in this conference. We can uh, dial the uh, location zero, which is with the hot dial dials, uh, manually by uh, a normal zero and hold, uh, hold functionality. So that's kind of the basic functionality of it. Um, the other feature I've added is the ability to change the uh, duration of the DTMF tones. Certain systems don't like very uh, slow or very rapid tones. So that is adjustable in, um, in 50 millisecond increments, starting at 50, 100, 150, and 200 millisecond uh, tone duration, and then uh, silence intervals between the tones. So for example, we're set at the default of 100 millisecond tones. We can extend that to 150 by dialing two and holding for two beeps. Beep three times, indicating three times 50 milliseconds or 150 millisecond tone duration. And now if I speed dial zero, you are currently the only person in this conference. The tones are, are much extended. We can even slow them down further by repeating that sequence. Now we're at uh, 200 millisecond tone length, which is quite long, and I'll demonstrate without actually dialing. And then if I do it one additional time, we cycle, we cycle back, oops, let's do it again, two beeps. Single beep indicates we're at the 50 millisecond or very rapid um, dialing. I'll demonstrate that. Very, very fast. And the system actually does respond to that. Let me go on hook, off hook, dial from memory zero. 
The number you have dialed. Zip. <laughs> well, I guess not. I think the speaker connection is um, interfering a little bit with the tones. The number you have dialed. Okay, well, in this case it's not working, so either because of the uh, location or the noise introduced by the speaker hookup I've got here, we need to do a longer tone, so we'll do that. And uh, that worked just fine. Um, in the past, I have gotten that to work at the fast rate uh, without any difficulty. So that is the basic functionality. As I mentioned, there is the blue box function, but that's kind of a phone freak thing, so I will demonstrate that later. I've got the code for this and some schematic diagrams and some hookups on some popular telephones on my GitHub site. I will post that below this video and uh, hopefully some of you guys will build this. There is a commercial product called the uh, Rotatone that goes for about $43 to $45, sold out uh, from a Canadian company, which uh, has very similar functionality and uh, hooks up about the same way. But this was a uh, public uh, project that was posted and has actually been worked on by three other development engineers before I got to it and made, uh, made my changes. So you can go on to GitHub and kind of trace that back to its origins. But I find this to be very reliable. It's been bug tested extensively and the code is quite reliable. On my GitHub site I do have the pre-compiled uh, hex code for this version. Uh, also for the version that includes blue box functionality uh, which is optional. Normally I don't think you'd want to include that for normal household use because it just the possibility of getting into the mode accidentally exists. So you probably would want to use the version that does not have it. And um, so I've got those two versions there with the pre-compiled hex code for each. I also have uh, hex code compiled for New Zealand style dials which have the same number layout on them but the number of pulses that can generate it is, is reversed. So one, for example, will generate 10 pulses as opposed to zero on a standard US or UK dial. So I have pre-compiled uh, hex code there for uh, both the US, UK, and most of Europe and Japan style phones and also the uh, New Zealand and I think Sweden may use that sim a similar setup. So both options are available. Um, so that's about it. Very nice, very useful feature, and probably one of the best telephone projects using a uh, AdMega that I've run across. Very, ex very uh, inexpensive, very simple to uh, to put together. No exotic components. Um, uh, thanks for watching, and hope you found it useful and entertaining.